Hi everybody, it's Colin McEwen from the New Fly Fisher. I hope you're well. It's a cold day out there. I'm going to have a nice hot coffee and it's a great time to watch a wonderful video about a fly fishing destination. Today we're going to be doing a repeat of a video that Phil Rowley did two years ago at a place called Scott Lake Lodge in northern Saskatchewan. Fantastic pike fishing, grailing fishing, even lake trout fishing all on a fly. We're doing this because for a lot of people in the United States and other parts of the world, Canada's borders were closed last year so you couldn't come. So we're hoping you enjoy this repeat performance. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to the new Fly Fisher. Today we're coming to you from Scott Lake Lodge, located in northern Saskatchewan, just a hair south of the Northwest Territories border. There's over two million acres of water at our disposal, full of large lake trout and trophy pike. Let's get out on the water. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. I will catch these all that is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is supported by Tourism Saskatchewan, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited. WeatherTech Canada. Despite its remote location, just a few miles below the Northwest Territories border, near the 60th parallel, some 555 miles north of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Getting to Scott Lake Lodge is pretty straightforward. After arriving in Saskatoon, I boarded our TransWest Air regional flight for the short trip from the Saskatoon International Airport to Stony Rapids. Within two hours, I was standing at the dock, ready to board our float plane for the final leg of our journey. Less than 30 minutes later, I had arrived at Scott Lake Lodge. I couldn't wait to get on the water. Prior to my trip, I visited the Scott Lake Lodge website to gain a measure of what I might expect. When checking out their guide team, one particular caption caught my attention. Many are called, few are chosen. It's not easy being a Scott Lake Lodge guide, as they need guides who can do more than just find fish. Their guides have to be competent navigators. After all, learning over a million acres of water isn't easy. They also have to be accomplished wilderness cooks entertaining communicators, comfortable using complex GPS sounders, infinitely patient, and of course, be fun to be with. The average experience of their guide team is nothing short of impressive. I considered myself extremely fortunate to have the benefit of fishing with three guides during my stay. Mike Nuggs Demian, Paul Pollywood Hamilton, and Greg Hammerham. I knew I was in good hands, as together these guides have a staggering 41 years of combined guiding experience at Scott Lake Lodge alone. This was going to be a great trip. After a few hours on the water, it soon became apparent that targeting pike in shallow bays adjacent to main lake structure such as rocky points, drop-offs and nearby islands was a wise idea. Pike prowled the main lake structure, hunting for all manner of food, including lake whitefish, burbot, even each other. With the hunt complete, the pike withdrew to the shallow bays, 
where the warmer water temperatures helped them digest while they rested before hunting again. Despite their often full bellies, it seemed the pike always had room for more food. These staging pike chased our flies at times with reckless abandon. During our trip, we also learned that not all bays were equal. Although almost every bay held fish, water temperature was key. Pike resting in cooler bays were often reluctant to chase the fly. Warmer bays, with water temperatures in excess of 60 degrees Fahrenheit, always produced. There we go. <laughs> now it's upset. <laughs> That's upset. Clear the decks, clear the decks. I don't want to be standing on the fly line. Use my pinky, guide that spare line up. Okay, keep tight. Keep no, I'm tight to it. And I might stick them a couple more times. Get the side pressure on them. Ooh, look at the dust clouds. He looks bigger. I'm gonna pull this anchor up so we don't have that issue. Right in the side of the mouth, too. 37. See if I can steer him in. So one of the things we're doing here is a bit of a run and gun approach. This Scott Lake is just dotted with these little bays that are home to pike. And we're just looking around if there's pike in here. Obviously we're gonna cast them. If not, we'll just quickly skip out and go to the next bay. And water temperature is really critical right now. We're still um, late June. So this lake's just coming out of its winter slumber. These bays are all warming at different rates. Some bays we will have 58 degree Fahrenheit water temperature and the pike are almost dormant. We'll go into the next bay, it'll be in the low 60s. Completely different game, those fish want to play. Later that evening, we met up with Polly to continue targeting small, warmer bays. Right here. Oh, I see him. Yeah, I got him, so I'm gonna lead him this way. Short cast right up against the rocks like that. Here it comes, broadside, helpless, stupid. Here it goes, he ate it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> That's cool. We're sight fishing in here. Just looking for quality fish. The water's crystal clear, light bottoms. Our quarry is dark. So he's easy to spot. We saw that one off the stern. He kind of gave us a wide berth and came up the shoreline. I led him by about 10 or 12 feet, presented the fly broadside, and he just turned, latched onto it, and then took it. And now he's running out to sea. Just giving him some left side pressure here to keep him out of the rocks. Because these rocks will, early spring like this, early season, I'm gonna warm up and pike like that warm. And you must use wire tippet. These fish have some teeth. There he is. He's starting to you always expect a last surge. But that fish, if we see them cruising high in the water, they're usually hunting and they can be caught. A little bigger than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Keep that bend in. Net out here. I'll just I was gonna grab him and then I looked he's a little bigger. Gives you an idea of what kind of fish we can expect by the size of that net. That's a nice fish actually. <laughs> yeah it is. <laughs> Look at that. What a beautiful specimen. Just gonna rest there. Woo! 
The next day, Mike and I headed back out on the water and sight fishing for big pike in the shallows. So we're just sitting on the approaches to a couple of bays here. This is one of Mike's favorite spots and he loves it because it's shallow, it's good sight fishing water, light bottoms and the pike, the most important thing in this whole equation, the pike love to sit in here and lay and bask in the sun. And we're just going to go in there with the floating line, the eight weight, a black bunny leech that imitates the immature burbot that these pike love to eat. We're going to go give it a try. The reason I brought Phil into this bay was because I got some fresh water coming in here from the little creek where the suckers run sometimes. Also we got some nice big warm bays out in here and the pike will like to sit in those and kind of bask in the sun and warm up and digest sometimes. Over in that other part of the bay there's a little sand hump and the fish like to jump up on top of those and sit on that uh, sand hump and uh, get nice and warm in the sun. A little bit later on in the season a little bit of vegetation, some eel grass and some other things will pop up in there. So. Uh, that's why we came into this bay today, looking for a big fish. There are so many pike in here. There we go. <laughs> I just felt something lock up and go tight. Oh, nice. This guy thinks he's a rainbow trout or something. <laughs> Doing the jump. <laughs> good better fish. Well, that's a good sign. I think I might get this fly. <laughs> yeah, I might get up Get to this your reel. so I don't stomp the line. Oh, look at that fish. thing sharking through the surface. Huh. Grabbed it and turned. Well she done. Is. Not bad. Not bad at all. Just like you predicted. Well, look at that beauty. Nice and clean, no marks on it. Well, something just ate. I just saw the flash of the mouth. I don't I think know. he's going to take some line I don't know on how it. big he, oh, he looks decent. He hasn't woken up yet, I don't think. Yeah, that's a big fish. That's a big fish. Just been an incredible experience up here at Scott Lake. Diversity of fish. we got lake trout, pike, fly line around Phil's feet. <laughs> I could see the white fly and then I just saw the flash of the mouth. The fly disappeared and then I felt the tension and just Keep stripping, strip set that fly right into his mouth. Unless he's a big predator, he doesn't want to let go of this. <laughs> She's probably more like it. There she goes into the basket. Nicely done, Mike. Woo! Look at this beauty. Just under 40 inches, right at the approaches. Big killing machine. Let's put her back and let her go. We're looking for ones that are sort of gliding and cruising. That's usually a sign of a cruising feeding fish as opposed mm -hmm. to one sitting flat on the bottom, dormant. Uh, he might be latching on. He's turning. He's on. Yeah, he's on it. That was cool. That was cool. We're sight fishing here. We're picking our fish because there's small ones in here and larger ones. And we had two and we watched the fly come into view and the big one sort of said that's mine and just took it and I got to see the whole grab so that is so cool and usually in any situation you got more than one fish competing for your your fly you're typically going to get an eat because they just compete with each other they don't want their colleague or their sibling or whatever to get what they have so I'll just get some line management going here there we go because this fish has probably got a few. Yes, we go. Man, in this 10 weight helios. <laughs> Always cool to see a take. Yeah, watch them just watch their whole attitude change. They glide by like they ignore it and then they just turn. Yeah, and his buddy's turned to look at him. Yeah, now he's going, oh, now I want it. That. You see the second fish coming? Got that. Big white bunny streamer into his mouth. It's coming for the white streamer. Here it comes. Fast, fast, bang. <laughs> That's so cool, <laughs> sight fishing for pike. Because on this light bottom, they stick out like little dark olive logs. 
and you can just watch the that pike as soon as the fly hit the water it just turned towards the splash and as I stripped the fly towards it it just let it go by and then just turned onto it followed I stripped I paused sight fishing at any time is cool and in these shallow calm back bays they're great escape if you got some inclement weather because they're protected especially using either very you know white in this case or black flies that you can easily see in the water because sometimes all you see is the fly disappear I'll let you release them mike One of the most exciting ways to target shallow water pike is using flies that ride on, in, or just below the surface. The surface disturbance these flies create attracts pike from a distance. The explosive, heart-stopping takes soon become addictive. For many, it is the only way to target pike. Subsurface flies rarely, if ever, make their way onto their leaders. Now look at those eyes right in through here. So they got these laser laser pointers, right? Yeah. So they're looking through here, that's their gun sights. Yeah, that's their binocular vision. Then when they flare, they flare this whole thing open. When they do that, they can't even see what they're heating. So they have to flare as wide as they can to get that fish in there. He's coming. What's he doing? Well, yeah, he chased like This guy wants it. There you go, you gotta let him have it. Finally, you got it. Three attempts, I was getting excited, buck fever, because you've gotta let them, as they come up for the fly, come over top of it and take it. And I was just setting too early. But this, that just seemed to fire him up more. Now he wants to go back to his lair. The pike are in this bay, sunning themselves. Weedman slider created by Stu Thompson out of Winnipeg. Great pike fly. Black, looks like a burbot. Creates wake. You can fish it wet. Fish it on top like we are. This fish has got some got some energy. That was so cool. He's got that right, the only trouble is he's probably taking it right down the chomper. <laughs> Ate it. There she goes. <laughs> Left it for. Her. They're so aggressive if you miss one, there's a pretty good chance if you just leave it and then strip it again, they'll come back and eat it. My poor Weedman slider has no tail, floats on every second or third cast if I squeeze the water out of it, but then it just rides subsurface and they don't seem to mind. There's, these fish are in a killing frame of mind. And they'll take it sideways, they'll chase it from behind. Sometimes they'll take it just like a traditional dry fly, sitting on the surface, not even doing anything. Oh, and bring it in the mic and there we go. Before, <laughs> after, <laughs> it's got no tail left, body's kind of spun around. It's a noble way for a fly to die. Before, after. <laughs> Thank you.
Day three, we begin targeting lake trout. Other than early spring when water temperatures are cool, or late fall when lake trout prepare to spawn, do they gather consistently in the shallows. Many fly fishers consider catching lake trout on the fly a daunting prospect as they always seem out of range. However, if you choose the right approach for the conditions, you can catch lake trout on the fly even if they aren't in shallow water less than 20 feet deep. To target lake trout on the fly at Scott Lake, I worked with my guides using three primary presentation options. When wind conditions allowed us to control boat drift, we prospected deep water in excess of 40 feet. Using our sounders to mark fish, I made short casts using fast sinking lines. I then fed additional line using a series of stack mens to get the fly deep and hook fish. So we're going to try chasing some lake trout on the fly. Mike's put us in a great spot. It's protected. It's out of the wind. So what this is going to allow me to do is I'm using a fast sinking integrated line. It's got a 30 foot head that sinks at six inches per second, followed by this bright um, intermediate running line. I'm going to cast slightly downwind. Mike's going to control the boat so I can work this line straight down until it's almost hanging vertical because we're fishing anywhere from 40 to 60, even greater in depth and feet and then I'm just going to do aggressive two foot pulls or even tuck the rod under my arm and do what we call the roly-poly and just cycle our hands in to strip that line in and just wait for that pulverizing take of these lake trout. It's a team effort with Mike controlling the boat, reading the sounder to mark fish and of course me uh, having to close the deal with making the right cast and getting the right presentation. And all we're going to use is a white dragon tail just like this, swims excellently in the water, it's going to jig up and down gonna look good to eat. Let's give it a go. Cast it out, feed in slack, trying to induce this to sink straight down and then two foot rips right through. Here we go. Fish, fish on. on. Fish, fish on. on. Found a hole, marked fish on the sounder. Got my type seven with an integrated line with the intermediate running line. We're just casting it out as far as we comfortably can and then just letting it descend right down till it's hanging vertically. We need light winds to do this. And then once it gets down, we're just stripping. I got a white dragon tail on, lots of action. And just stripping it up vertically and all of a sudden, wham, there we go. Lake trout on the fly. You just got to Get it down. Mike's doing a great job controlling the boat. And we have the lake trout in the basket. It's fighting me a bit, but there you go. Beautiful lake trout. Taken in water you wouldn't normally consider fly water. Off he goes. <laughs> it can be done, folks. It can be done. There we go. Fish on. Feels good, too. Looks good. Looks good. There your line. Clean the there deck. Clean the deck. Clean the deck. There your line. There he comes. Oh, he's nice. He's nice. Oh. This is nice. We got this nice, calm water off the point. When we first pulled in here, we had a fish that was five feet under the surface. I cast to it, but I, I'd i like to blame it on the long tail of the fly, but it was probably me setting a little too early, too excited. And the next cast, here, and we're only what, 35 feet of water, you said? Only 35 feet, yeah. Yeah, so more than manageable fly yeah. water. The fish are at about 30 feet, we're 45 feet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this rod's bent over. We've had them up to the surface once. Now it's just a tug of war. Reel down and slowly raise. No jerks. Well, jerks Nothing let the jerky. Drag work. Constant tension. Oh. There he is right at the surface. Into the basket. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> okay, flies clear, so we'll just flies clear. get that out of the way. Let's check that line before we put it back yeah, in. Yeah, in case he's... Absolutely. No, it feels smooth. Ugh. Kneel down, wet hands. 
Oh, pull him up out of the net. Whoa, 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 buddy. There we go. Signature, whoa, white tip fins of a char. He really wants to go. Look at him, look at him go. Just let him make sure he's good and healthy and he's fighting me good. There he goes. Lake trout on the fly. <laughs> I want to do that twice, maybe three times. Let's do that a bunch more times. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Fish on. Oh, just get that nice 45 degree angle look to it. I don't think it's as big as the last one. He's just bulldogging. There he goes. <laughs> he wasn't done. So I'm just going to make sure that I clean the deck, get my feet out of the way. Now I might start to gather some line here. What about him? But I'm getting tired. Getting that forearm burn. Look at the big fins, white tips, typical char markings. Into the basket. Thank God for a big net. <laughs> oh, get him out of the net. Oh, oh, we go. Look at that. Look at the beautiful orange fins. Nice little lake trout. Whoa. Off he goes back to the depths. Day four. Mike and I go out again for lake trout, but this time we're targeting them in the deep water adjacent to the drop offs. Using the countdown method, we were able to consistently locate and catch cruising lake trout. Uh, spring, fall, a little bit different for lake trout. The spring, uh, where we are here, the lake trout like to travel along these eskers where we have significant changes and drop-offs. So where it comes out to a nice flat, and sand flat especially, then it drops off significantly. And those trout will travel along that sort of like a corridor or a highway back and forth. Well, I think with the, way, the best way to set up for this with a fly rod, typically with conventional tackle, we'll troll along that shoreline and catch fish. But with a fly line, I think we'll set up and we're going to park ourselves on the sand where it's not too shallow or not too deep in, in the shallows. We're going to cast out into the darker water, right? And then we'll retrieve. So we'll let that sink. And as it sinks down, it'll get more or less to the angle of the contour of the, of the bottom. And as you strip, it should come up along that. We're also going to try a few along uh, parallel with the shoreline and when you retrieve then along it'll come along the shoreline and come along that contour. Well electronics they're important in uh, several several different ways. Obviously you're going to be watching along for contour differences, you're going to be watching for those elevation changes. You're also going to put potentially and hopefully mark some fish as well. So good solid marks uh, are going are gonna to show up, that's going to give you an indication that you're going to have some good fish where you're sitting. So what we're doing here is Mike has marked fish at 15 feet. We're anchored right on the edge of a drop-off here. I'm using a Type 7 line that sinks at about two, it takes about two seconds to go a foot. I want to go 15 feet down, so I'm just multiplying that, two seconds for a foot, so I want to go 15 times two is 30. Count that down with my watch and then just strip it back aggressively. Two foot pulls, ooh, got banged again. And just strip until they, oh, there was one following. This is good. So we've got a bit of a formula here. It's important to, with sinking lines, to get your flies down consistently where you want them. So once you hook a fish, you can repeat it rather than just casting out and hoping for the best. So we started at about Five to the hour on the minute hand here. So we're going to go down to 25 past and then start stripping. There we go. Fish on. Slammed it right as we were coming up the drop off. And it, they've been, every cast, I've been getting hits, but they've been, lake trout are famous for short striking, and we were just contemplating putting a, a stinger on and then. We finally latched on and hooked up. So every cast, we've been 
timing it down. The sounder, the electronics are critical to this because A, it helps you mark fish and where they're suspending in the water column and then you can time your cast down to get to them. Got that big net because, not that this trout necessarily warrants it, but there are some monster lake trout in this lake. But these are a blast and the take is solid. <laughs> There's no little subtle, was that or wasn't that a take? This is a, you strip and all of a sudden it just goes hard, locks up and goes the other direction fast. Steer them into the bucket. All right, let's look at the prize. Peel all the net in so he's got less net to swim around in. Grab him by the tail, the caudal peduncle, and there you go. Beautiful lake trout. A killer of mini minnows and bait fish. Okay, let's put him back. Speed induces the follow. And right as the fly's starting to ascend. Oh, I got bumped again. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. Right at, right at the drop. So these fish are, as Mike pointed out, it's best to, like, fish drop offs the same way as if you can try and get your, your, your presentation on more of an acute angle or even parallel to the drop because they're cruising this like a wall on the deep side, ambushing any bait fish that swims along the edge. There we go, beautiful Scott Lake Lake Trout. Good eating size. Yeah. Day five, Polly and I head out to try our luck at our third primary presentation option for lake trout, river outlets. These river outlets provided cool oxygenated water concentrating both bait fish and lake trout. These presentation options also work well when chasing lake trout on other water bodies besides Scott Lake. There we go, fish on. There we go, lake trout on the fly. Just casting out in the current, letting it swing down, and then trying to bring it up the seam where the slow water here is, and the main current coming out. And just two, two foot aggressive strips, red and white whistler, and just socked it. What's also fun about these fish is they hit hard. There's no subtle grabs. Got that whistler right in the scissors. Little chewed up, beautiful little lake trout. And let him go. So we're sitting here, we've got the falls coming out, the main current tongue, we're sitting in the slack water. So I'm gonna cast down and across into the current, a little downstream mend because we're sitting in the slow water, that's gonna help the line sink and swing down to about 45 degrees, let that fly and line get down, and an aggressive two foot strips because the lake trout are either hanging under the current or just on this slack water, and we're fishing this little red and white whistler and they just plow it, so here we go. There we go, right out in the main current, which only accents the whole fight. Nice fish. So we're just quartering the cast down into the current. I'm sitting in the slow water, so I'm throwing a little downstream mend to help get that fly to sink using this fast sinking type seven integrated line with an intermediate running line. And then just letting it swing along the seam and two foot aggressive strips with a red and white whistler and they just plow on it. This is good fun. There we go. Ooh, look at that beautiful lake trout. Beautiful settings, got the falls coming in behind me. 
Beautiful vermiculations. All right, let's put them back. The fly line choices are pretty simple. You're gonna need a floating line. This works well for pike in shallow water, both top water and streamers. And in the fall, when the lake trout are up on the reefs prior to spawn, you can easily get to them with a floating line. The next line you wanna consider is a fast sinking line for working off deep drop-offs for lake trout. Something in the type six, type seven sink rate. Integrated lines work well that have different sink rates along their length, such as an intermediate running line and a fast sinking type six or seven head. And then an intermediate line that you can use for targeting lake trout from an anchored position in shallow water, say 15 feet deep or less. An intermediate line also works well for pike on the shallows when they're a little dour and less likely to chase a fly, such as when an approaching weather system is coming in. Whenever you come to a fly-in destination such as Scott Lake Lodge, luggage limits are always an issue. Thankfully, you don't need to bring a lot of fly rods. An eight weight is gonna cover the majority of presentation challenges you're gonna face here for lake trout and trophy pike. But there are those situations where you wanna throw large wind resistant flies to get those explosive surface takes for pike or work fast sinking lines off drop offs and into deep holes for lake trout, then a nine or even a 10 weight is gonna be a welcome addition. Day six, our final day. We talked to the manager of Scott Lake Lodge, Jason Hamilton. We've got a beautiful uh, facility here on a 12 acre island, just south of the 60th parallel. We can accommodate 26 guests at a time. We've got 14 guides, all with 18 foot guide boats, ready to go. We uh, have everything that the customers will need. Well, we've got a, a great kitchen crew. They're turning out meals for people. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is fantastic. We've got a spa, you can get a massage, a hot tub, uh, wood-fired sauna, fitness facility, and a rec center, full service tackle shop. Scott Lake itself is about 160,000 acres, but with all the flyout lakes that we can go to for the day, we've got about 2 million acres of fishable water. Uh, which is a massive amount that we haven't explored entirely yet. We get asked a lot of times what the best time of year to visit Scott Lake Lodge and truthfully it's any time that you can get a spot here. We do have a lot of returning guests each year and we like to think that's a testament to us doing our job well. Uh, the best time to get in touch with us is a year in advance when you'd like to come up. We'll be able to do our best to fit you in. When you are chasing trophy pike at Scott Lake Lodge, you don't need a wide range of flies. A simple assortment will work, but make sure you have a few of each type because those big teeth can be awful hard on them. So the first up would be a selection of bunny leeches. Black, purple, white, brown, ginger. These work particularly well when the pike were less active when water temperatures were cool because the temperatures in every bay seem to vary. A bulkhead streamer works well. These flies offer a wide profile, but they shed water incredibly fast, making them easy to cast. This is a pike slider in white. This fly really performed well for us. It's visible. You can see the fly in the water. And of course, when it disappears, that's in a pike's mouth, you know you've got a set. This is an excellent pike fly, a black weedman slider. In the shallows, small immature burbot are dark in color, blacks and browns, and their favorite pike fodder. This fly works well on the surface, and when it gets a little saturated, it works just as well subsurface. Then there's always those explosive surface takes. So flies like poppers or this gurgler that create a wake are gonna bring pike to the surface for those explosive takes. And another surface fly to consider is something like this diver that's gonna pop under and then pop back up and make a distinct popping sound and this long tail creates quite a wake for those explosive surface takes. Lake trout are a really fun species to chase with a fly rod. Thankfully, you don't need a lot of flies. They like to eat a lot of bait fish and there's lots of things to choose from here in Scott Lake to feed on. Burbot, shiners, cisco, even baby pike. Some of my favorites include deceivers, 
in a variety of colors. This is chartreuse over white. Chartreuse and white's always a great color whenever you go. Blue over white, gray over white, but it's tough to beat a deceiver. Next up to back, it'd be a clouser. This is a craft fur clouser in orange and white. Chartreuse and white would be another great color. Uh, gray over white, blue over white, and all white. Then you can get a blend of both the deceiver and a clouser in the half and half. This is a chartreuse and white one, and all white would work. Gray over white, blue over white. A whistler, a flash tail whistler, where the flashaboo extends out past the bucktail tail or a synthetic fibers you use for a tail, but this white and red combination really performed well for the lake trout. Another excellent fly to consider is a simple dragon tail. This is a version of mine I call a blushing dragon. It's got a long white dragon tail, a dubbing brush, white body, and then a red face on it with dumbbell eyes. Tied on a jig hook, it rides up and down and it really pitches and undulates and drives those lake trout crazy. No trip to a remote destination such as Scott Lake Lodge would be complete without a traditional Canadian shore lunch. At the end of one day, near the end of our trip, each guide prepared one of their favorite recipes, creating one of the most delicious smorgasbords I have ever had the pleasure to experience. Enjoying outstanding food amongst friends set against a spectacular background is a must experience for anyone visiting Scott Lake. After shore lunch, we headed out with Greg the Hammer to put the final nail in the coffin. She's right behind you. Yeah, see her? There you go. Got yeah, it. There we go. That's a good sign. <laughs> That's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> We're really taking you right up and on the yeah. shore. That fly just landed, two strips, locked up, stripped into it, set that hook. And it hasn't shown itself at the surface other than a roll and it's taking line and making good swirls. So we're gonna get it on the line, on the, on the reel rather. So I don't step on the fly line. Ow, that hurt, that was my knuckles. I'm using my two fingers at the rod handle here to guide the line onto the reel so I don't get any line build up on one side or the other. Should that fish suddenly surge and that line binds up against itself. And that fish was just sitting up on the weeds, resting. Seems they like to go out and feed a little deeper and then come into the shallows and let that sun stimulate their metabolism. Thank you. There we go. Ooh, that's all right. Beautiful fish. <laughs> Woo! That's a toad. Look at that. Wonder how many baby pike, burbot, pike half this size have gone down that mouth. She did. Oh, there we are. <laughs> that was incredible. Well, there she goes. There she goes. <laughs> oh, she's she's big. We take her. We expect something. She's gonna wake up. There she goes. <laughs> All right, she's coming in. I'm always worried when they do this because they could suddenly surge, but we're going to get them in the bucket. There we go. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, look at that. <laughs> How's that for a pike? Big old girl, a few little scars on her nose. They're just coming out of spawn. What a beautiful fish. All right, let's let her go. There she goes, swimming strong, off under the boat. Wow, what an incredible fish and an unbelievable experience. If lake trout and big northern pike are on your bucket list, you have to come to Scott Lake Lodge.
I hope you enjoyed today's show, learned a little bit more about catching lake trout and big northern pike on the fly. For more information on this episode and other episodes in our series, please visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. And don't forget to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Tourism Saskatchewan, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boatworks, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.